Hello? Hello. Hello, is this Tris? Yes, hello. Yes, my, my name is Kylie Flavel. Liz gave me your number to, to call you about delivering the donation uh, to the, the families in the Atlas Mountains. We learn how to survive. That is the deadness. Why is she crying? This is this is the real Morocco. This is what you know. This is what matters. No, it's nothing. They need someone to help him. This is the type of view that makes you feel alive. <laughs> We all have times when you just want to travel to relax or lie on a beach and do nothing, but I think the trips that really stay with you are those where it's an adventure, where you, you don't plan everything, you, you, you leave room to be spontaneous and, and you're witnessing another way of living, a, a life so foreign from your own that it makes you question your priorities. I didn't want to do a, a tour, I wanted to give something back to this culture that I'm learning from. So I found this group called Children of the Sahara and they work with these local guides who are helping me to buy food and blankets to take high up into the Atlas Mountains to help nomadic Berber children who live out in the wild. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Sorry to keep you waiting. That's not a problem. Okay, not problem. I'm excited. <laughs> Driss, my driver, is a guide for the company Authentic Morocco, and he grew up as a nomad, traveling across Morocco with other families and their camels. We learn to be patient. Second is to be satisfied by yourself with nothing. And also to appreciate life and to have a contact with the nature. Can you imagine what it would be like if you had no home? Not homeless, not a traveler on a gap year, but literally growing up with no base, no possessions, only your feet to carry you from one place to another, sleeping in tents made of sticks and goat fur, living off camel's milk. If you grow up in deserts, for example, me and I am happy with nothing. I grow up with nothing. But mm. always we thank God because we grow up in the deserts. last night and uh, we've been on the road now for 10 hours. We're about to meet Ali who is going to take us to the nomadic families tomorrow but first we have to buy all the supplies. We buy bread, sugar, olive oil, tea, socks and blankets for the Berber families. I say goodbye to Driss and hello to my new driver Ali and go to sleep excited about the next part of this adventure. This, this is how life is meant to be, out in the great outdoors, in nature. Oh, when you start like this, with this beautiful morning light, just passing Berber women who are, who are walking in the, on the road with their children. And the air, the air is so clean. It just, oh, you have to be here. It, 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 really, it really makes you think that, that nothing else matters. You know, we haven't, we're, we're disconnected. We don't have any internet. We haven't, uh, checked any email it's just <sighs> you you see I, I i am a liar no i say to you ali we won't stop today we won't stop we won't stop <laughs> five minutes in the car <laughs> ali ali can we stop <laughs> okay okay yalla thank we'll you go. Much. <laughs> not uh, not all the berber families the nomadic berber families are open to foreigners coming uh, into their world, rightly so, because we're, we're intruders and particularly if we've got our, these cameras with us. But uh, yeah, Ali says that uh, he's spent so much time with them that hopefully he can explain that uh, 
we have good intentions and that we want to help them. It seems funny because we don't actually know uh, where to find them or, or what we don't have obviously an appointment or uh, any anything confirmed. Uh, he's, he says he will just go out and uh, and look for them. He's so lovely, Ali. He's really he's really gentle, but uh, he also has such incredible knowledge of of, of Morocco. We go off road and I'm looking out at these mountains thinking, how do they live here? And then to my even greater surprise, the first camp we discover, there are only two young children. Ali tells me that their parents have left them here for a week or so to go off and find food. I find this extraordinary. I mean, how many children under five years old do you know who could live, eat and fend for themselves out in the wild? These children, although malnourished, are so happy to be with no toys, no iPads, nothing but nature and each other. It, it, it breaks your heart because um, they are so happy just to receive a pair of socks and makes you, makes you very, um, very emotional. But um, they're very beautiful children. How old are they? Oh dear. Oh dear. They don't there's, know? There's no, there's no, any idea. They don't have any idea how old they are. We just ask them. They say they don't know. Is it interesting because they they have no concept of time because uh, these children don't go to school. So we're talking and suddenly Sadi starts crying and I stop filming and I ask Ali what's wrong, what's happened? And he tells me that it's because she thinks maybe we could be the bad people her parents had warned her about who come and take small girls to sell on the black market. And I just hate that a little girl of her age even knows that people like this exist. People might kidnap small small children. Is this a, a danger? Yes, it's dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. It's dangerous for the kids. Yeah. That's why always uh, someone is a little young. They stay with little boys together in the camp to protect. Them. <laughs> Sadi. <laughs> and. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard to just leave them, but there are other camps to bring food and blankets to. The, the problem is that we only have two blankets left, but there are 12 women. So uh, Ali is trying to find a fair way to, uh, to decide who gets the blankets. There are two boys who are orphans. And so he is saying that maybe the blankets should go to them, but some of the women are not happy with them. We finally come up with a way. <laughs> Ali has said he's going to give everyone a number and then he'll just draw out a lottery to decide who gets the last two blankets. And it seems like the head elder with his staff is, uh, is in agreement with this way of, uh, of dividing up the last of the rations. This is why I travel. For this reminder that most of the daily things we worry about are trivial. That you don't need language to share the pain or joy in the eyes of a stranger. And that the human spirit is both fragile and magnificent. <laughs>